Gilbert, Gilbert. Or, does, does my screen look all shaky? Every time I mess with a button, it's all shaky. I don't know, Gilbert, but the, what's shaky right now is uh, is your voice, and I know why. Your <laughs> Dallas Cowboys were Mine. steamrolled by the 49ers, uh, 42 to 10. Uh, it looked like Brock Purdy was a third, the $40 million quarterback, and Dak Prescott was a sev- the Mr. Irrelevant. Uh, just not a good day overall. Uh, Dak Prescott, 14 to 24, 153, one touchdown. He said he was going to limit the interceptions this year. He had three uh, yesterday. Brock Purdy, 17 to 24, 252, four touchdowns. Uh, Gilbert, honestly, it was uh, Jorge, how are you? Nice to see you. Uh, appreciate you jumping on as always. No way like um, it, it was just a, a what the 49ers do, they punch you in the mouth, they run the football. Brock Purdy distributed, they got turnovers, they made the 49er or the Cowboys pay with those turnovers, and they end up beating the 49ers, uh, 42 to or they end up beating the Cowboys 42 to 10. Gilbert, biggest takeaway from this game. Uh, yeah, biggest takeaway and an easy, obvious observation that I took a while to catch on, Fernando. The Dallas Cowboys cannot beat the 49ers. And, you know, people say, you know, eight times out of 10, no, 10 times out of 10, the Cowboys can't beat the 49ers. I'm done, Fernando. That's how bad it was. I was a whooping. And, you know, I just felt like the Cowboys were too good to be, you know, a predictable loser. Like, like when everybody's picking the 49ers to beat the Cowboys and it's supposedly in a showdown between two good teams, it, it didn't make sense to me. Like, I felt like at one point you're going to be annoyed. At one point you're going to be due for a win. But that's not football analysis. I fell for the trap of just being due for a win. They got their butts whooped. And they're starting to now lose the mental battle, too, because what if they do play each other again in the playoffs? You remember that beatdown at Levi Stadium. You remember the losses in the playoffs two years in a row. They needed that win for for their for the mental state to know if we play you guys again, we already did it once. The Eagles know they can beat the 49ers because they beat them last year in the NFC title game. The Cowboys have no freaking clue how to beat the 49ers. And the only thing that's pretty good for the Cowboys, and I'm reaching here for something positive, Fernando, because in the NFL, you never know what's going to occur. Injuries, playoff seating, matchups. You might not even face the 49ers if you're trying to get to the Super Bowl. So that's all you could play for, but do not count on playing the 49ers because you will lose every single time. And I'm done, Fernando. (laughs) I'm done with them. I'm fed up. It, I don't know. And honestly, it's just one of those things where you, you think, okay, the Cowboys are in a perfect position here where they're going to play against the, uh, the, uh, the cow or the Cowboys are going to come in. They could actually do something against the 49ers, but the 49ers just look too, uh, they just look too strong right now. And, uh, and that's, that brings me to what we were asked right here. Uh, let me ask you based on what you've seen, is this the 49ers Super Bowl to lose? The only reason why I wouldn't say no is just because them and the, I think the Eagles and them have an unfinished business and they're going to have to face each other at one point, I believe. And it's going to be interesting. Last year, they didn't have Brock Purdy. Now they have him. What is that going to look like? Where is that game going to be? Uh, yep. I've, I want to petition the NFL to switch the 49ers over to the AFC so we can get a Super Bowl of the 49ers and the Eagles, all the bad blood and everything. Can you imagine that that Super Bowl like that? Uh, they've, there's been a lot of chirping, even until now, there's still some chirping between both teams, but um but it's just it's not a good look about what uh what happened last night especially because like we said Dak Prescott had, like said like I'm going to stop uh I'm going to stop the I'm going to limit the interceptions he didn't he turned the football over he made some questionable uh throws or decisions that you're like dude what like where are you going with that so uh but like you said it was it was the offense it was the defense uh it was all I mean the defense did okay at times but uh, here's Gilbert right now with his Cowboys. <laughs> There's Gilbert trying, trying to decide if he's going to throw the towel or not. Uh, <laughs> Every time the Compass logos disappear, I'm like, okay, Fernando has some wild video showing. And exactly. I'm just hoping that you don't, you know, get the YouTube. Started. No, no, no. I was less than, it was seconds. even less than five seconds. There you go. All right. Yeah, but... no, we'll be fine. Uh, but. It, it, it just it wasn't a good look the way they 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 try to move the football the defense man I, I just want to talk about one thing though real quick and I know I'm jumping Greenlaw and Warner remind me a Ooh. lot of Navarro Bowman and Patrick Willis they're they're not as I mean they're they're up there I I still think Patrick Willis and and Navarro Bowman were just 
elite. These guys are the best linebacking duo, though, in the NFL. I think they're so quick. They're so aggressive. They make plays. They cause fumbles. They uh, they they do everything. And I'm really impressed with uh, with both of them and the way they do everything. But, man, they, they just – and this is what Dan was talking about last night when we were watching the game. He's like, if you notice, somebody catches the ball from Dallas, all 11 hats come to the football. No matter what it is, I, well, he didn't mean it like eleven, but like at least three or four guys yeah, out. right on them. As soon as the the ball's caught, the fumble with I think it was Tony Pollard. Three guys were on him. They ripped the football out, and another guy came up and was able to grab it. So it, it's just impressive what San Francisco does. Steve Wilkes, we all know what he did last year with the Panthers. Uh, now he's a defensive coordinator. I know at first some people were like, mm, I don't know, this doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like. Uh, like uh, D'Amico Ryan's uh, defense. Well, hey, he's still doing impressive things with it. They got Randy Gregory Gilbert. I actually think that's a sneaky good pickup uh, just because he doesn't have to go against the ones. He can go. He can pick and choose his spots. The way I think they should use him, though, is move kind of the way the Chargers move uh, Tuli, uh, Tui Pelotu, the way they move him around over the guard, over the center. The, if you start moving him like that, I think Randy Gregory could be very dangerous. And then yesterday, Nick Bosa gets a sack that's something that they need to do pick it up pick it up get sacks start doing different things so i was very impressed with the 49ers yesterday da I, i'm more concerned about the dallas cowboys and i am impressed with the yeah. uh 49ers because i knew the 49ers gilbert the next three games are going to be crucial for dallas they could go three and oh they can go oh and three it they go at chargers the rams go there and they go to philly that is going to make and break your seat. If you're not two and one after that three game stretch, it's not going to look pretty because the Eagles, the Eagles just don't. The Eagles and the 49ers just look like they they might not lose a game this whole season. I think they play each other at one point uh, during this season. I can't remember, but uh, but they just look like they're on a crasher's course uh, to face each other. And the Cowboys just it looks like their season is starting to dwindle with the injuries. Banderesh it might be put on IR, Gilbert. Um, that means you won't have them in any of those three games. Uh, they lost uh, Chirpin, the yeah, the returner, yeah, yeah. the quick receiver. He got a touchdown too. He, yeah, he's out for a couple of games. They they're lose. They lost a couple of players yesterday. So I I don't know what your feeling is on that, but that's just mine. Yeah. That I'm more concerned about the Cowboys than I am impressed with the Eagles. No, you, you are spot on on the Cowboys. I mean, before I go back to the Cowboys, I, I just want I just want to December third, highlight... by the way, one twenty five. E, 49ers cool. at Eagles. It's a 125 game cool. BS. Move that up. Move Man, that up to if move it up to a primetime game. That feels a little late. Like, like, what if they play each other in January? And it's like, okay, it's only a month Incredible. apart. Like, do it in November. We want to see it already. And before in November, get the, we get 49ers and Chiefs. Oh, that's a pretty good one, too. Uh, yeah. I think the Dolphins play the Eagles too and Cowboys, but a lot of good games down the down the, the road here. Dude, but the dolphin, the dolphins play uh Kansas City in Frankfurt. Did you, did you lose some light there, Fernando? I feel like uh, <laughs> okay, then while well, you figure that out, let me let me give you some uh, some love for uh, Fred Warner. You already brought him up, and you reminded me. I think the cat got excited. He wanted to talk Fred Warner too because so, a lot of times I was gonna say sometimes a lot of times Fred Warner gets lost playing with so many stars. You know, for the 49ers, Nick Bosa defensively and a bunch of star power on the offense. That finally a primetime game like notice what fair warner was doing like they were doing a lot of like packages about what warner is doing i'm like cool people need to see this because like, like you mentioned you know he had you know a, a couple fast plays he had a sack on on uh Dak prescott where like you know i think it was a uh, your boy uh emmanuel Acha who broke it down the warner tape and i'm like yeah this guy's just quick fast and i think the broadcast did a good job of highlighting here while you try to fill your highlight here fernando of how quick Warner is. And then, oh, they also have Dre Greenlaw, who another star who gets lost there. So they are loaded there on the linebacker side. And and my Super Bowl prediction, Chiefs versus 49ers, San Fran. Oh, 33-21 Purdy MVP. Wow. Uh, yeah, let me highlight Purdy, actually, for a little bit. Purdy is, Purdy. you know, I don't want to get too carried away, but like Fernando, I, I mentioned this guy is way better than Jimmy G. He might be their best quarterback in a very long time in San Francisco. And he might be exactly what they need to get over that hump and in that drought. Like those throws to George Kittle were outstanding. They were highlight reels, uh, those touchdowns there. So, uh, Palma Mont, Cowboys wins was the worst teams, Giants, Jets, and Patriots. Yeah, they were pretty bad. 
And uh, what does it say about the Patriots that they got beat down by the Saints and the Cowboys, and the Cowboys just got their butts whooped by the 49ers? But that's another story for another day. And, yeah, you're right. 49ers and Eagles are, are a level above the rest. I do want to see more of the Seahawks and the Lions. Yep. But it's gotten to a point, Fernando, where, like, I think the Cowboys are after that. Like, you're the fifth team now. You probably will have to be because you're not going to win the division with the Eagles there. So uh, I'm starting to feel like it's going to be the same old Cowboys season, win a wild card game. Okay, you're done in the division around. You don't belong with the best of the best. And they have a lot of talent, Fernando. The injury to Trevon Diggs was brutal. But it wasn't like even if they had Trevon Diggs, they weren't going to win that game. So, uh, you know, I'll let you take it away from here. But the summary of the game, what the game was Fernando, when Christian McCaffrey took the handoff, threw it back to Devo, who threw it back to Purdy, who Purdy threw the touchdown to George Kittle. That's like four all pros and Purdy in one play. And it's like, what can you do if you're a different team besides the Eagles to com- com- compete with this team, you know? Yeah, no, I completely, uh, I completely understand. Good to um, see your light back on. For uh, I mean, uh, I was waiting for there to be light, so there we go. Yeah, I was gonna say for your uh, pretty face, but uh, I think the shirt is even more uh, pretty. I mean, I'm trying to. Uh, yeah. So obviously, the uh, I'm I'm really interested to see what uh what then what happens now with the 49ers. I mean. 49ers really I mean the Cowboys we can talk about them all day I think everybody talks about them networks talk about them enough uh I don't think that like so this is the crazy part about the 49ers at Browns at Vikings they dude this game is crazy on the 29th they play the uh the Cincinnati Bengals at home the Bengals could (laughs) <laughs> the Bengals could be in for a long day that day. Uh, then they go to – this one's interesting. They go to the Jaguars on November 12th. Uh, that's going to be an interesting game. Buccaneers at Seahawks at Eagles. Uh, Seahawks come there at Cardinals. So and then they play the Ravens. So, I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that they're going to go undefeated. I was say, do you want to predict their first no, loss? No, 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 no. You know, it's crazy. Brock Purdy is undefeated as a starter, though. That's wild. That, that's, 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 that's crazy. Right. Come on, you have the schedule up there. Can you give a prediction when they're going to lose? Oof. I'll say they, they'll lose that Jaguars game. Oh, when is that? November 12th. Oh, so they'll be like, what, 10, 11 wins? Yeah, in, yeah, just about. I'll, I'll say they lose that one, and I'll say they lose the Eagles one. Those will be the only two losses this year. Wow, okay. 15-2. and two. I, that's... that's going too way ahead, but I think when they play that Eagles team – the 49ers are going to need that one. Just just to, like, again, like I mentioned with the Cowboys, needing that for, for like, yeah. the, the mental games of the playoffs. Like, they need to beat the Eagles or – I don't know. Yeah, but that game is going to be really tough. But, I mean, but going back to it, I, I agree with you. Brock Purdy just looks really good. Uh, George Kittle, I mean, three catches, seven – all three of his catches went for touchdowns. That was pretty <laughs> impressive. Uh, they, they busted out a trick play that the Lions had just busted out a couple of days before. So, I was really impressed with that. Um, Debo Samuel just keeps on being a Swiss Army knife for them. Five carries, 30 yards, three catches, 55. You know, really impresses me. I know you didn't have that big of a game, but Brandon Ayuk, I think yeah. Ayuk is really impressive. He's out a couple um, times, yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering what they're going to do with him after, I think, after this year. Um, I think that, uh, I think that, I don't know. I'm looking at it, and I kind of, I kind of feel like Ayuk should get paid. I think he's done everything that they need to. They're gonna I find a way for him because the quarterback yeah. is not getting paid yet. That, exactly. That's wild. You have to find a way to pay that guy because he's been really impressive. But, uh, but yeah, Gilbert. I mean, this game was just re- like if you would have looked at the score line, you'd be like, oh, okay. But then you look deep into it, and you're like, oh, wow, okay. Like everything the 49ers did, the way they get everybody on the ball, like they threw how many? So, like I said, Dak only had uh, cd lamb only had four receptions for 49 yards what did pollard have pollard had eight carries for 29 yards and four catches for 35 yards he's had a very quiet year i I expect the more from Pollard. i mean that's the reason why they you franchise tag these guys to see if maybe they can uh like i was i was surprised that the that the colts uh re-signed um jonathan taylor jonathan taylor especially because Zach Moss, Zach Moss looks like a guy. 
imagine just paying the guy 42 mil and then the backup goes for a 160 two touchdowns and, dude and when I, I saw those stats i thought they were jonathan taylor stats and then i'm like oh crap. i'm like maybe he saw what jonathan taylor made and he's like you know what i'm gonna outshine him today so well, uh, well fernando I'm, I'm surprised you don't bring it up but you, you pretty much whooped me uh in fantasy football the same way the 49ers at the cowboys and Besides me getting crushed by you in fantasy football, I I dropped Zach Moss in fantasy football because I saw Taylor got resigned. So I'm like, great, I can't do anything right in week five. Oh, this has not been a good week for you. Uh, it'll be better next week though because on Monday Night Football, you and I will be together again at uh, oh yeah, at yeah, 